Hey there, good morning. It is a glorious day in the Italian Alps. This is Cortina d'Ampezzo, a great base for exploring and hiking. And it is a welcome sight to see the sun shining. Yesterday was rain. There is nothing that squashes a hiker's dreams quite like a rainy day. So uh, very stoked to see the sun shining and be able to see the incredible views of the Alps. So my plan for today is to uh, get up there somewhere. I have not actually researched specific hiking trails or anything. Pretty straightforward. You can see the ski slopes, the ski lifts. I'm trying to notice if they're moving and they are. So I guess I might be able to just get a ride up there, but uh, that's too easy, right? Anyway, I'll investigate. There is something else that I want to uh, show here. Might be kind of interesting to uh, check it out. You can see the uh, rings, the four rings on both of those ads there. I am assuming that that refers to the Olympics. So the uh, Winter Olympics was here in Italy in 2006. However, that was over by Turin, Torino. This looks uh, more new. I was just looking online and apparently the Winter Olympics will be in Italy again in 2026, so in five years. So I'm not, you know, 100% sure what the uh, reference is to, but considering that those are recent looking ads, it is probably looking to the uh, future. Okay, so there are five rings. On the ads there was just four rings. I'm not sure, but uh, Cortina 1956. I believe that there was the Winter Olympics in uh, Italy in 1956 as well. Let's, uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to pay to go in here or something, or let's just poke around. All right, check it out. Cortina d'Ampezzo. I'm right in there somewhere. And then uh, these would be those mountains there. All right, looks like some epic hiking. So I guess that uh, the Winter Olympics might be held in here in 2026, but I don't know uh, for sure. There we go. Definitely the uh, five Olympic rings. My priority is to get out of here, get out of town, get into the mountains. So it's hard to see, but it is a ice rink in there for ice skating and hockey. Funa via Tofana? That looks like the cable car that I'm seeing up there. Maybe I'll go for it. Go ahead and get up on the uh, mountain and there will be lots more hiking to do. I'm sure that I'm going to uh, test my legs no matter what today. Oh. See the holes there for skis? So it's 26 euros round trip, that is about $30. There are two different stopping points. There's actually a third way up at the top there. I can actually barely see a little building up there, but it is closed, the uh, last stretch of it. So uh, the 26 euros is round trip, including going to the second point where you can get off and so I'm going to go there uh, first and then hike around there and then I can catch it back down and get off at the uh, other uh, stop there and then there's other hikes you can do and other cable cars or ski lifts or whatever out there so we'll see I'm just going to uh, explore around and uh, see how far I can go how high I can get up etc stoked for this And there you can see the lovely town of Cortina. And where I hiked in the last video was back up there. So I wanted to make this a video about uh, traveling into Italy now. It is July 5th, 
2021, and Italy has officially opened to tourism for a couple of weeks now. So I came here from Greece. The rules can be tricky to figure out, they uh, change. There was like another date recently in which Italy opened up further to American citizens and others so that it is easier to come in. For me, coming from Greece, that I had to provide a negative COVID test, a antigen test was good enough as opposed to a PCR test. The antigen test is the sort of easier one where they don't put the uh, Q-tip quite as far up your nose, so it's very, very easy. Like, uh, it's just like, you know, a quick little swab. And then it took 15 or 20 minutes to get the results there in Corfu town on Corfu Island, where I was uh, in Greece, and then it flew the next day. Super easy, very smooth. They didn't even check uh, anything when I arrived in Italy. It was like a domestic flight. The checking was at the uh, airport, the check-in desk in Greece. They wanted to make sure that you had a negative PCR test and then your passenger locator form for Italy. I will put the uh, link down below to that. And then when I landed in Bologna, then there was no customs, no passport control. They didn't check my passport or anything. I just got off the plane, picked up luggage, and that was it. I was in Italy. So it will depend on various factors, your uh, passport, which country you are from, as well as which country you are flying from. As I mentioned in previous videos, I am fully vaccinated, but that was not enough apparently. You have to have the uh, PCR test. Maybe things will be changing in the future, but uh, for now basically expect to need to uh, get a test. And then other than that, it is the usual rules, the Schengen zone of Europe. You are allowed 90 days in the Western uh, European countries, basically the EU, but slightly different from the EU as far as which countries are in and which countries are out. But uh, basically you get 90 days in most of Europe and then the uh, borders are wide open and you just uh, pass through, although that is gonna be different now because of uh, COVID and things are going to be uh, more restricted. There might be border controls. I've heard various stories of uh, borders being open between, for example, Italy and Slovenia, but uh, probably going into Switzerland, for example, then uh, there might be a passport control. So it's all a bit confusing and it can be hard to figure out uh, exactly the rules. So you will want to research it yourself to make sure. But uh, the uh, short story is Italy is open to tourism and they're you know, trying to make it uh, fairly easy to come in here. So I guess this is the first stop it looks like. Notice those guys are just sitting there, so I'll do the same. And get up uh, a little bit higher. So, I am at Ravals. You can see the top, Sima Tofana, 3,244 meters. Here it's 2,472. Started here, the first stop, the second stop. There's a sign that says Lago Gedina. There is Lago Gedina. Now, you can see a trail going up to the top. However, it is not possible because of snow still. You can certainly go part of the way. And so I think that I will start off doing that is take that hike and see how far we can get. Check out the trails along the way and kind of make up my mind what else I'm gonna do. Look at these absolutely stunning views. In just a few minutes and you are up here looking straight across at the uh, High Peaks of the Alps. Okay, thank you. Have a nice day.
So I just had a lucky break. I need to explain what's going on here. First, however, I thought that uh, a few people out there might be curious about my footwear. No, I am not wearing sandals. Anyone who has followed my recent videos knows that I was in Greece and I only had sandals. I was hiking around on the Greek islands in the sandals. I've done other hikes in sandals. The uh, Kalalau Trail of Hawaii that I've hiked like eight, nine, ten times, always with sandals. I uh, climbed to the peak of Mount Fuji in sandals. However, I do not necessarily recommend it. Hawaii is a different story because it is so hot and wet there. It is uh, perfect for uh, sandal hiking. I'm talking about, uh, you know, good, uh, sport, sturdy uh, sandals. But uh, for up here, definitely a much better idea to have a good pair of shoes. And so I bought these down in Cortina down there, about uh, 75 euros. They seem really good so far. A, a good fit, great tread. These are not just sneakers, these are hiking shoes. So uh, what happened there is that uh, I had a long conversation with the lady there that I said thank you to, and I thought that I was recording the whole thing. I had taken my camera out as I was talking with her and press record, so I thought, and it turned out that I didn't record that conversation, unfortunately. So I have to explain uh, what happened there. I will get hiking here. I don't want to be huffing and puffing too much, but uh, let's just... Uh, investigate, see where this trail goes. So I was poking around there, trying to figure out the uh, trail situation from where I was before. I uh, left the gondola area. Here you can see it's already turning to snow. I walked down the other side of the gondola area. There were some roads there that I showed, like Jeep roads. And I was trying to figure out the uh, trail situation. I went down one, and I was looking at views, looking up here, but the road was like going back down towards Cortina, and I was just kind of confused. It didn't really make sense compared to the map. And so I was, you know, looking at it, trying to figure out, well, should I maybe go back this other way? And then you go down there, something like that. And then this lady comes up over the hill, hiking up that trail there. And so I decided to ask her, see if she had any information. So I say hello, and I ask her, is the trail that you're coming up, coming from over the area that I wanted to go, like if it wrapped around or something like that, or if there was a junction down there that would head back up the uh, mountain. And she wasn't really sure because she had come up from the uh, parking lot down below. And so I uh, decided to head back the other way and look over there. And in the process, I ended up talking with her. So she was from Verona, Italy. Verona is the site of Romeo and Juliet where Juliet gets poisoned and Romeo thinks that she's dead, so he kills himself, and then Juliet wakes up and sees that he has killed himself, and so she kills herself. Sorry to give away the ending there, but I assume that most people have seen that one already. And so we're talking, and we're also talking about the uh, trails, and then we get to the gondola, again, where I was before, and from there, then, I was thinking maybe you go down the hill and then it wraps around there. And I was saying, you know, it's closed. You can't go from here up to the upper part. And she looks at me like, no, it's, it's open. That's because she was planning to take that gondola. And then I realized that it was actually going. And so what happened is that the first stop or what I thought was the first stop down there when I was on the gondola was not the first stop. It was some other stopping point, and that wasn't being counted when the guy explained to me the two different stops he could go up. And so when we got there, then I thought, there's the first stop, and then we got to the top, the cable car ends there, and so you have to get off. And so I thought, okay, this is the second stop, and this is where I'm getting off. And so then I did my little walk-around thing. And then it turns out that the second uh, stop is actually here, and was another cable car, a separate one that is included in the ticket, that uh, comes up to this point. And that right there is the third stage that is not open. And so there is the actual peak of the mountain. So I uh, hopped back on the uh, car there and got up here. Now, as for hiking around here, then obviously you can't go too much further up that way. However, I'm going to go check out the snow covered trail there and just see how it goes, see if I can get a little ways up there or maybe the uh, snow clears and then the trail appears again for a little bit or maybe I just won't get very far but uh, 
let's take a look. This is somewhere you gotta be so careful because it is all, you know, movable rocks. So there are some footprints going over there. You can see, this is the trail. And then it looks like it kind of disappears up here, trail marker. Let's go down this way. So here you have another ski lift, all of the uh, ski chairs taken off of it back in the snow. Some people up there. It is definitely a little chillier up here, obviously. Snow on the ground, but I am toasty warm right now. And I do have a jacket in the back here. I'm going to show you everything I have in my day pack once I uh, stop at a good uh, viewpoint and take a break and have something to eat. So there is the top of that ski lift. Looks like I could get up there. I'll see. But for now, this looks like the perfect spot to take a seat, take a break, and soak up this absolutely insane view. So here is everything that goes in my day pack. Some of these are items that are just in there all the time anyways and not necessarily necessary for a day hike. So here's my journal, doesn't really need to be in there. Pen, map, my cell phone, beer can opener, not uh, essential of course, up here, unless I had a beer, which uh, would be possible. Chapstick, a couple of face masks, a tank top. I will definitely get uh, overheated, I'm sure, especially with the sun coming out here, which is great. My uh, hat, the pack itself, rain jacket, and also in case you get uh, chilled, and then I have some food and beverages. Water, juice, milk, because I have granola. This is my breakfast I'm going to eat. Granola, raisins, and some pistachios, and then fork and spoon that I'm not gonna use right now, but uh, they are always just in here and then emergency toilet paper and a little bag with a few things. Also not uh, necessarily essential, but uh, some afterbite bug ointment in case you get bit by mosquitoes or whatever. Fingernail clippers, not essential. A uh, flash drive car that is just always in there. Needles and thread is in here as well. Band-aids, and that is it. Got a little chilled there while sitting down. The uh, sun has been just kind of peeking through a little bit and then the uh, clouds come back, but it's not cold. It's really uh, quite perfect. But you can imagine that the weather could shift, of course. Doesn't look like storm clouds converging today. The weather forecast was uh, to be nice. But you never know in the mountains, it can change. And so you should always be prepared for the possibility of cold weather, worst case scenario, possible snowstorm. That is one reason that I'm not going to do the hike down. I guess it goes down through there. It looks like quite a long hike. And for one thing, I'm not entirely certain on the trail how much snow is gonna be 
there. And also just the uh, shifting weather. I would want to be a little more prepared. I need to get some pants that have the uh, zip off. A little spider here. Zip off legs so that you can have the shorts when needed and then have the pants when needed. And then it would be good to have a warmer shirt or whatever. I walked out of Cortina having no ambitions of ending up up here, almost at the top. I thought that I was just going to walk as far as I could walk and see how far I got up. And uh, then saw the cable car there. And so I'm glad that it worked out as it did to get these kinds of just stunning, stunning views. So I'm going to uh, hike back down, take the gondola down one stop, and then from there, hike back down to Cortina. So here is another ski lift that you could take up to the top up there. P. Tofana. You are here. P. Tofana. Here is the cable car going up, and then you can see the third section. Two different summits up there. Tofana di Mezzo and Tofana di Dentro. 32.44, 32.38, both about uh, 10,500 feet or so. Some lower peaks. So that is the highest around here, it looks like, 32.44. And so uh, I am going to take this road back down to Cortina, which I guess is that over there. Unfortunately, it is a walk down a road. I guess there must be some paths around, but I haven't uh, found one. Heading back to town, so uh, this will get me there. Oh, we're talking to the camera. All right. <laughs> Have a good one. Have a nice day. You too, man. <laughs> 